Hello and welcome to Overshadow Shadowcast with me, Thomas Anderson. And Abigail Moore, Tech Wizard. Hello again. So as always, we'll start with what have you been playing? Weekly roundup of our gaming activities. Because... That's how you want it to be. Exactly. We, we want to be playing games to the point where we have a weekly roundup of our gaming activities. Yes. But it really comes across a little bit more like a police profile <laughs> in my head. It's not so much an update on sort of like in the news, you might have an update of celebrity or, or royal engagements. This is more like a rap sheet. <laughs> This is his recent activities and his known aliases and uh, what's the other one they always go on about? Uh, I don't know. Acquaintances. Okay. You obviously watch more uh, cop shows than I do. Or I just know words. So, I know words too. Yeah, but not the good ones. So, we'll start with what have Abigail been playing, which I think is going to be summed up in a sentence. Still stuck on GTA 3, on that level, with the armless guy. Well, he's, go. he's got an arm, he's just, miss, he's he's a, just he's missing an, the other arm. An armless guy. I, not got an arm. That's not armless. You can still be armed by the other arm. <laughs> I can leave, you know. I can just leave and you can just do all of this. You're literally connected. <laughs> I can do this, I can take the headphones off, I can put them on your head, and then I can walk away. This is without a camera, this comes across as uh, one of us is bullying the other. <laughs> I know, you are bullying me. <laughs> no, I'm not. The guy has an arm, right? I know, because I've played the game. He's just missing his right arm? Left. Left arm. Ooh, wow, how did he get rid of that left arm? Oh, okay. Um, what does he does his arm switch in the next game? Does it? No, I just assumed he was holding something in his right hand, but he must have been holding a trigger in his left. Anyway. No, he lost his left arm. He's got his right. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You just said he's in Vice City. You see him lose his arm. Okay. <laughs> so I was trying to remember how he loses his arm. So, uh, if that's all you've been playing, apart from the game we've been playing together, which I think we should come to... Um, together is a bit of a stretch. It, it, well, we've both been playing it. And it will be together <laughs> when you rank up So I enough. have been playing... No, 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 we'll get to that once uh, we get rid of mine, and then we can have a proper conversation between the two of us about that. Fine. <laughs> so. Oh, and uh, again, it's raining, by the way. So that's why you can hear rain. There's literally nothing we can do to stop that sound. Well, it sounds a lot heavier than it actually is. Yeah. No, I mean, it, and, like the mic is picking it up a lot heavier than it actually is. So it's actually just a light drizzle. This is, for Scotland, this is a light drizzle. Yeah, there shouldn't be any spate of drownings yet. It probably sounds as if... It does. It sounds like we are... Been, Poseidon like, and <laughs> Zeus have been out drinking. Or maybe my headphones are just a bit more sensitive, I don't know, but... Anyway, back to the games. Uh, I have been playing some Halo 5 with my chums, as per. They recently... Re I didn't have it installed when it happened, so I don't know when it happened, but at some point they revamped the playlist, got rid of some of the old ones that were there, things like... Um, what do you mean by playlist, sorry to interrupt the, you? The different games that you could choose to play online. So right. Slayer free for all, all that sort of jazz yeah and um they got rid of some of the other ones that used to be there like breakout or it was one we had to capture bases to rack up points tiny little circles on the map basically uh, and there's another one where you spawned in to a map with pistol only and you had to find other weapons pistol and grenades you had to find other weapons and you had to wipe out the other team it's like a battle royale game, but with rounds. Right. They got rid of that as well, which was a shame, because that's the only one I actually used to play. But they replaced it, like I said, with Castle Wars, which I've been playing a lot of and find that very fun. Yeah, the, the, that was, you said it was a bit like Capture the Flag or something yeah, like it's that. It's Capture the Flag, but with uh, the two bases are, are usually some sort of like ca castle or tower or sort of temple. Yeah. But with a, um, 
a sort of almost highway or walkway between them. Right. So you can run across it or you can drive vehicles and run people over. Okay. And everybody has swords and one grenade and they kill each other with the swords and the grenades. And you've got to capture the flag, but it's a bit different because there's only really, in real terms, there's one way in, one way out. So you're not, there's a little bit of maneuverability. But there's right. not a great deal of flanking going on. You're basically charging at each other until you happen to bash your way through. That's really all that it is. You just hope to kill so many of them that you make it into their base, but they spawn at the entrance to their base, so you have to get a great, a good number of people right in the door, because you're going to lose a lot of people once you get in. Mm -hmm. So I have a great affinity for uh, Castle Wars. I prefer it to the other game types that my friends seem to like to play, like SWAT, which I hate, which is uh, you spawn in with either a pistol or a battle rifle mm -hmm. or a DMR, uh, which are sort of precision, precision weapons, and nobody has shields. So everybody's just going for a headshot, and that's not the way I work. I, I am immediately pointing centre of mass, which means that I'll put three in someone before they can respond, but they won't die, and then they'll just plug me in the head. It's just a sort of... My immediate reaction is centre of mass, because you, you could miss the head, you're not going to miss centre of mass. And I very rarely miss when I aim centre of mass, so it's just annoying that apparently a bullet going straight through your chest isn't going to kill you. But I've, yeah, I've got a few stories about um, Castle uh, Wars games that I had when I was playing by myself. Um, I don't think my friends are necessarily great fans of uh, Castle Wars. I, I, I don't know if they like their KD, their kill-death ratio, too much, or if it was the fact it's so difficult to actually capture the flag. Right. But they also did not like the fact they kept getting run over by people, including me. Because <laughs> when you're driving the warthog, you can't go around people because you'll go off the walkway. So yeah. you have to plow through them no matter what team they're on. And so you just end up killing your own team. Fantastic. But it, it is, I'm afraid, a viable way of, of winning because... Uh, one of these stories involves me using a warthog to great effect. Yeah. A warthog being a jeep, a car. I know what it oh, okay, is. Okay, sorry, sorry, I sorry. don't believe it's an actual warthog. It's riding a warthog. Yeah! <laughs> anyway. What, um, oh, what noise do you think a warthog makes? I can't squeal properly. I'm, I'm not well. Well, one, a, a warthog won't squeal. It'll go <laughs> like a pig. That's what a warthog is. It's a pig. No, I know that, but a pig will squeal. If you if you sat a two ton Spartan on a warthog, it's squealing. You don't know that. Yes, I do. Shall I've, we experiment? I've done it. <laughs> I totally believe that. That's that's what the barn at the bottom of the land is for. There or, is no barn <laughs> at the bottom of the land. There is no land. It's just a garden with a hut. Shed. It's a hut. It's a hut. Okay. Um, so just two stories that I had a lot of fun with was uh, one game of Capture the Flag in which I was basically the singular victor. So what happened was I uh, spawned in to this map which has a speed boost located very high up. You've got to do a bit of jumping and mantling to get there. So I got the speed boost and I was able to use that to get into the base along with a couple of other of my teammates. Right. So then what we did... Uh, just we weren't really working together properly because we weren't headsets uh, in team chat we were just running around but we seemed to constructively all make our way using the same path to the top of the castle for the flag and I was able to kill two or three guys who were chasing them instead of me so that helped us all get to the top and I grabbed the flag yeah. and then started running it back and then I died but when I spawned back in I went and <laughs> somehow I was still the first one there to pick the flag back up I think what had been happening was my team had been throwing it between them to stop it from being sent back mm -hmm. to the base because eventually if there's enough enemy units around it when it's not being held it gets reset. Yeah. I made it, grabbed the flag, made it all the way back across the walkway because I grabbed the flag when it was basically right in front of their base, that's when I'd left it. And I got it all the way back to our base and up to where our flag is for a score and then noticed that they'd stolen our flag at the same time. So we were both standing on our respective bases with the other team's flag trying to score, but we couldn't because you need your own flag to be in place to get a point. Right. So 
when you have the flag in Castle Wars, you have it's the only time you have a, a ranged weapon other than the grenades. You've got a pistol. So I was shooting across the entire map trying to peg the uh, other player who had our flag, hoping that if I could kill him, it would sponsor my team just getting to the flag to reset it. Right. But he then noticed I was trying to shoot him, so started shooting at me. So we're shooting at each other across the entire map, and it just wasn't working at all. But they managed to sneak. There was a blade in it, uh, an energy sword, sorry, that this one of the particular bonuses of this sword, which is on this map, is it makes you invisible. So they, one of their guys got this sword and got into the base because he was invisible and was able to kill me while I had the flag. But he then got killed in turn. So the flag didn't reset and somebody else in my team picked it up. So I got angry at the fact that with like a minute to go, nobody in my team had killed the opposition unit who had the flag. Right. Our flag to get us a point. Because I'd yeah. been up there for like five minutes waiting for it to happen, if not more. So I ran back up to the place where the speed boost is, got back into their base, killed, got all the way to the top where there was three guys waiting, killed all three of them, which I thought was pretty good, and then put my sword straight through the face of the guy with the flag and reset the flag by myself. Literally, as I was killing the three of them, there's a sort of announcer mm -hmm. who said, 10 seconds. So I'm like, oh my God, ah! boom, 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 boom. Killing as many as I can. So it's, it was really, really, there was a lot of tension and apprehension yeah. while I was killing people and just got the flag back before the overtime started, which is three extra minutes. So with like two seconds to go, we got a point and you could just see their entire team just like shut down, like the droids in <laughs> uh, the first Star Wars movie. Because just, 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 it was like two seconds, there's no way they could get the flag back. No. So, um,. Victory! All by me. <laughs> uh, and there was another one, another story which I very much enjoyed where uh, I don't actually know if we captured the flag. Did we capture the flag? Yeah, we captured the flag in this game twice. Uh, I never captured it. But at one point when I was uh, holding off the opposition units, um, I was holding them all off by myself and I managed to get five kills in a row and I recorded it. So I'll be putting that up over the top of this. Mm -hmm. Five kills within a few seconds is called a kill-tacular. So there's eight opposition team unit uh, members. Yeah. It's eight v eight. I killed five of them by myself while I was holding. I was holding off their whole team. The entire team, while we protecting the guy who was running with the flag. I think so. Or or I was no. Sorry, this might have been I was covering them as they went in to get it. Right. Yeah, uh, it might have been a different game, sorry, where we captured the flag twice. This was just another attempt to get in. But I held off the entire team by myself while my team tried to get in and take the flag. And then we had the same problem where we both captured each other's flag. But that time it wasn't solved. We just ran out of time. <laughs> But I was, we were fighting our way in that time, sorry, when I got the kill tacular. There was another game where I, I managed to be involved in two flag captures. One where I captured the flag, grabbed it, ran it all the way back myself and got it in. Uh, and, and, and I actually, and I think I drove the person for the other time. But you'll see in the video, because I recorded this as well, this is why I got confused, sorry. There was a kill tacular in a different game which ended up a tie. But in this game, I captured the flag and I had my gun out and I was shooting. Pew, 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 pew. And I shot somebody who was in like a warthog or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and either he'd lost his shield, so I was lucky, or he drove his warthog off and it counted as my kill. <laughs> but I shot him from inside my base and he was just coming out of his. So it was like the entire range of the map. Yeah. And I got a kill for it. So I got the long shot achievement for shooting someone from miles away. But I did it with a pistol without properly aiming. Because yeah. you can just like hit fire or you can basically just, uh, you can look down the sights. So I was just standing at the doorway and went pew! And then suddenly got all these medals at the bottom of the screen for <laughs> killing with a flag, killing a vehicle, killing at long range. I was running around and then suddenly they popped because I shot, ran away, was halfway up to putting the flag down when suddenly all these medals appeared at the bottom and I, and I got a kill for shooting and then he died afterwards. 
like of his injuries or something. I don't know, but oh, well done. That was really. I've got pictures of it and stuff. That was really weird. I had some really, really, really good games in in uh, in Warzone Firefight, which is basically where you play rounds against the AI, okay, which are randomly spawning in, mm -hmm. and so you got random objectives, and some Castle Wars games. I had some really, really good games past week, so uh, that was fun. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's a Something lot of fun. to keep you busy. I'd, I'd recommend that if if you've got Halo Five, they've really managed to keep a very strong online presence even though it came out I think two years ago so cool they, they, that's quite Halo does that I think possibly with the exception of 4 I know that Reach kept its online presence for a very long time so maybe until 5 came out so it, it keeps its online presence and that's good that's a good bonus for Halo games the other game I've been playing as we all know I started The Crew last week yes and how's it uh, been going? well I'd only had a little while the first few hours to give my feedback before which was quite heavily story based my feedback yeah the story is quite perfunctory but i've found myself endeared to it and i think it's because i know they haven't put a story in the second one and so i'm sort of far more willing to be quite happy with the absolute nonsense dross that is the story it's just there to service the mechanics of the game but it's something to quite pleasantly get along with yeah I have to say that it does help me give me a reason to move from uh, race mission to race mission because I think the story missions are the proper races. So it okay. does give me a reason to actually do them and they have found a way to interconnect them properly. And I, it's, I think if 2 wasn't out yet, I'd be furious at how stupid the story is. <laughs> but I think, and you know how pointless the story mechanics are, but I think the fact that I know that they've abandoned the story mechanics for the second one means that I'm endeared to the story a little bit more. Yes. Sort of like uh, it's it's a little child uh, and it's quite weak. And you might be annoyed at the fact it can't run the 500 metres. That's not even a race distance. You can't run the 200 metres or whatever. But there's something that you're sort of sitting there thinking, well, do you know they tried? They got 350 metres, so that's quite endearing. Yeah, it's sort of... Well, that's that, 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 that is my parents at, at sports day. It's like, well, she tried, she tried. She was two minutes slower than everybody else, but she tried. Wow. Yeah, I was at the other end of the table. Well, you were the fastest kid, were you? I actually genuinely think I might have been. I think I was just quite unlucky. I never won one of those race days. And I think it was just because I didn't know the rules. No, I just found it frustrating because I knew the rules. I just couldn't win because I was just so slow. Yeah. Like I everything. Really angry because um, in the P1 or P2, I can still remember this, it scarred me. I uh, was doing the 100 meter sprint with the boys in the class and I was winning and I lost because I slid across the line so it measured it from my chest right. and I was very very angry I, I, I was very upset because nobody had told me beforehand and I'm only like 5 or 6 that it was measuring it from the chest and yeah. not the first part over the line so I got really upset and my parents were like why did you slide you were winning I said well I thought that's what you had to do to get over the line because that's the first part of your body I said no it's done from your chest well, I win then, because I was clearly going to win. Why didn't they just say, no, you guys don't win, because we didn't tell him the rules, and he was obviously going to beat you. So I'm afraid you don't win, because he was way faster. No, they gave it to the person who put his chest across the line. It's not the Olympics. <laughs> you have the ability to say, no, he was clearly the winner. And they didn't take it, and it really annoyed me. As you can tell, it didn't scar me at all for life. But... When it comes to the crew... <laughs> Can I bring it back to the hero now? Yeah, we'll get over my therapy session. Uh, hopefully the twitching stops soon. I'm, um, patting you, I'm patting him on the shoulder to show my support. See if you were actually patting all of them on the shoulder. That would be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm patting you all on the shoulder. I mean, there's not hundreds of thousands of them yet, but there's more than enough of that to be weird. <laughs> um, every time somebody listens to it, you just magically pop in and just go... <laughs> disappear. Um, so yeah, so this will be a bit more about the <laughs> mechanics of the actual, not the driving or the story. The story has got quite interesting, I have to say, but it's still 
on an objective level, nonsense talk. But on a subjective level, quite pleasant because of the fact I know there's not one coming up in the second game. But this will be more about some of the other mechanics that aren't story or race. Yeah. So um, when it comes to the map, um, first of all, it's really annoying. Because while it's quite fun, it takes quite a long time to load up um, the world if you want to get back into the world. So if you accidentally hit the map button, you're waiting three or four seconds to get back out of the map. And because of that, if you accidentally press B when you're in it, you've got to wait three or four seconds to then load it back up. So that's a bit tedious. I don't it's think the map three or four seconds. It's no, not... but it really slows it down. It really, really see when you're used to instant map, it doesn't make any sense that this game is unable to do it. Every single other game, it if, even if there's a load for something like Assassin's Creed would have had a small load, it, this feels sticky. You know, you feel like you've lost control a bit. For example, when you zoom in or zoom out. You sometimes you get, if you just press the button, sometimes you get a small amount of zoom and sometimes it'll just zoom it right in the whole way until you're staring at the top of your own head and sometimes it'll zoom it all the way out so you're looking at the entire continent. Right. Rather than just moving it slightly. Just because you've just pressed the trigger. It just goes, boom. Oh, okay, so now I know what he had for his breakfast. Can I maybe see a bit? So if you just want to see the, the streets around you, can be a bit annoying trying to get that up specifically. It feels really jarring. And then when you're when you're waiting for a load to happen, you feel a bit stuck. It doesn't feel organic like other loads I've seen from maps. It feels bad. You know, it doesn't feel smooth. Okay. So that's very upsetting. I have found, I remember I complained last time there was no way of filtering the map. There is, but you can only filter the map in each of the sections. So you can't filter the map to show you everything, to show you all the crates, to show you all of the skills that you can do, all the uh, car per part searches or the uh, strange satellite dish searches uh, or the story races all in one go. You have to choose between the story missions is one of the options in the map. There's oh, is it exploration for things like landmarks, satellites and the car parks, parts, parks, uh, and oh, so it's not offences, that's the, for the DLC, but that is there as well, it's something else, skills, for all the skill race options, I told you before that there's uh, skill things like driving through gates at speed or mm -hmm. staying on a certain pathway or, or making a car jump of a certain distance. Um, all of it's measured in bronze, silver, gold, right. or no award for car loot parts. Yeah. And it, so it's a bit disappointing. You can filter the map, but you can't look at everything at once. And it might be done deliberately to stop you getting overwhelmed, but it would have been nice to have the option if I so choose. Right to you. Um, fast travel system is brilliant. Uh, I went into the map. I was stuck in a motorway in Chicago, I needed to be on the road below the motorway and it was a huge big looping road to get around, but thankfully the, I just quickly looked it up, there was a landmark basically almost right underneath the, um, the motorway I was on. Okay. So I just fast travelled to that and it just, it didn't have, it was weird, was it incorporated, this is where it felt smooth, it incorporated the loading up of the world after you've been in the map with the movement. So basically, as the map began to dissolve away, you could see the camera moving towards where it was going to drop the car. And then you just peered there and drove off. Very, very smooth, and it massively cut down the travel time. So that was, that was quite pleasant. The fast travel system is very fast. The found the races and the uh, skill things that you can do to be very varied and quite challenging at times. Uh, but as long as you get a medal, you always get a car part. And... I've found that they seem It does to like you're saying car park, not it does, car park. Uh, you can always find a car park. Uh, you, find a car, you always get a car park as long as you get a medal. And I've found that there's a difference between the quality of car parts you get for mission races and for skills. And also I think between whether or not you've done it before or not. So I um, was trying to do this one particular skill where you've got to stay on the, the piece of... Uh, lit up road that it tells you to stay on while going as far as possible in yeah. a time limit and I found that it was really really difficult but every time I got to the end and got a bronze or silver it gave me a car part 
and that would help me do up my car until eventually I hit like a, a note sort of like diminishing returns and I was getting car parts that weren't giving me any advantage because your car is valued as a number I think mine's like 350 and every time you get a new car part you get a plus something mm -hmm. so it was giving me plus twos plus threes plus ones plus fours and then suddenly plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero because I'd hit the limit and then I, I found that even with my car this higher rank I did a race and it was still challenging still difficult Still hard to get the gold, even though my car was so souped up. But I still got a really good part. And I think there's a separation. There may be a malleable difficulty rating. Still make it difficult if you've gone off to do all the skills. But I think the skills can only give you a certain quality of car part. And only take you so far in upgrading your car. Yeah. Whereas the missions can do more. So you, the skills are still worth doing, but you can never do them so much that you make the missions ridiculously easy. I like that. It meant everything remains a challenge. That's good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I like a challenge as long as it's not impossible. Yeah, well, I don't know how much you're, you don't know very good at race games. You don't have any race games, do you? So you're... I used to have a race game many, many moons ago, and I hated it. Yeah. Hated it, hated it, hated it. Yeah. Because I could not play it. Right, it's a shame because learning, just learning twin stick concepts, it, buttons and all that jazz just getting used to a controller very i think racing games are very good for that nope i couldn't i couldn't stand it i can't wait i genuinely can't wait to show you halo and your brain melt because they've got the, the driving is so unique in halo it's called halo driving <laughs> because you, you know how um you voice move <clears throat> my voice is my voice is gone hey uh, you know how in first person shooters and stuff you move with the left stick and look with the right stick? Uh, okay. You move the camera if you're third person with a left stick or if you're first person you look with it. I think you'll do the same in GTA. Uh, you move the character with the left stick and move the camera aspect with the right stick. I've never tried moving the camera aspect with the right stick. What does the right stick do? Have you ever used the right stick? I don't think I have actually. Right, no, there we go. We've just broken your mind. Um, have I? That's what happens for most games. Right. Well, in Halo, when you get in a vehicle, for most games when you get in a vehicle, it changes to the right trigger, moves the vehicle, and you steer with the left. But in Halo, that's not what happens. You still move with the left stick, look to steer with the right stick, because you need the trigger free in certain vehicles to fire it. Because you need to be able to fire the yeah. turret in a tank or anything like that. Yeah. So it keeps the move on the left stick. So you just push that forward to accelerate. And oh. the look becomes the steer for left to right. But see, when people get in and try and do that, their brains just melt first time round. My brain's melting now. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, You're explaining it to me. I'm literally I'm going, all I can hear is left, look, left, right, right, trigger, <laughs> trigger, what? <laughs> trigger free. <laughs> Trigger look left, three. look left, right, left, but trigger stick, what? Am I talking to my gran here? You're talking to someone who's <coughs> virtually never played a game in her life. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, I'll just quickly finish this off with the crew, which is... The, the, way, the way you're talking to me is like how I try and describe stuff to, like, say, one of my parents, anything very technical. That's how, that's how I feel now. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to understand this in the future. I'm never going to look at my parents like that again. Yeah, I've never done that. Whenever I've explained anything, I don't dumb it down. Oh, I don't dumb it down either, but it's, it's, you know, when you try, you, 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 you think to yourself, how does, is this person not getting it? It seems so simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I understand. Yeah, not everybody understands it the same way. That's the sort of essence of teaching, isn't it? Yes. Hence why I never became a teacher. I'm sure that's why. That's the sole reason why. Um... <clears throat> They thought I could make a good primary school teacher. I'd oh, have primary you know. school, yeah, that might work. Yeah, I think you could be a good primary school teacher. Yeah, yeah, I think you could be quite compassionate with all the little children weaning themselves. That's also another reason why I would never become a primary school teacher <laughs> in this day and age. <laughs> uh, well, it's going to be really embarrassing when I wee myself. Anyway, uh, just to finish this off with the crew, <laughs> there's some multiplayer stuff because I mentioned. You better not do that in my car. No. You do that um, kicking you out. Don't get it on the motorway or whatever. Um, I'll let you ride a cow home. I'll just hijack a car. 
I know how to drive. As long as it's not Halo steering. On the motorway. In fact, if it is Halo steering. I know, that'd be quite a good hijack. I'd have to sort of do a Saints Row hijack and throw myself through the front windscreen. We almost hit a cow on the motorway once. How it got... That, how did that come up? <laughs> did it come through the front windscreen and try and take control of the no, car? No, no, seriously. It, it, it had just like broken free of its like pen. I was just wandering on the motorway. We almost hit it. What type of cow was it? Frisian? Highland? I don't know. Black and white. I think it was a black and white Frisian. cow. Okay. Frisian. The milk cow. Frisian. Stop saying cow names at me. Fri- That's not a name. It's a species. It's not... The, no, the, no, no, this no, is, no. This a is Mr. Is Tony species. Frisian. A cow is a species. Cow is a species. Yeah, you're right. I'm thinking of breed. Mm, sorry. So, yeah. Very, I'm not very well today and you just struck me. Thank you very much. Excuses, excuses, man. I'm you, tired. You nearly broke my arm. Hey, I'm not tired. I'm not well. Mum's got plague. She doesn't. Stop, stop saying people have She's got the plague, right? I've got whatever I've got. Probably death. And you're just whacking everybody who's not well. <sighs> uh, be more courteous when you visit my mum next time. <laughs> what was that? Be more courteous next time you visit my mum. I made it sound like you attacked her when you didn't. You just whacked me. That was it. Which is fine. I don't feel any pain. <clears throat> Not when somebody... I, ow! Ow! Okay, fine. Point proved. Um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get back to the crew again. We've got the, the some multiplayer stuff. So I mentioned crates, which are things that you can do. And what you do is you, you grab the crate and you've got to drive it to a destination while the cops are chasing you. Right. And what I've found is that occasionally people will beam into this and they'll try and help you stop the, uh, help you, or you can help them Mm -hmm. deliver the crate. And if that happens, you get the award as well. Uh, But also people who have the calling all the blah, blah, blahs DLC, calling all units DLC, which is where you can become a police officer. Did you say blah, blah, blah? Did I hallucinate that or did you actually? No, I said it because I couldn't remember. Okay, that's fine. But it's calling all... I was going to say calling all uh, freaks, <laughs> but it's, call, it's calling all units. Um, see, I think one of the adverts for Splinter Cell, which came out in 2001, was uh, calling all freaks, where the music was used. It's always stuck with me. It's amazing. That game was amazing. It was the best Splinter Cell by far. It was incredible. There's maybe some rumours going around that they're making a new Splinter Cell, because Ubisoft have oh, been really? too quiet about that. Really? Uh, Anyway, um, so yeah, you get these crates and you've got to deliver them. And I think the people, because I've never been able to beam in, uh, join a game as a police officer trying to stop them. So I think it's for the people who have the Calling All Units DLC that they can come in and try and stop it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to try and protect the person getting to the destination from both the police and from the people who have come in as police units using the DLC. Um... You can find these crates yourself and start them and deliver them, or sometimes you'll get race. <clears throat> pardon me. <laughs> sometimes you'll get what's called a chase invitation. Yeah. So you can beam into somebody else's crate delivering, try and help them. In which case, like I said, you get the award. Uh, depending on whether or not it's bronze, silver, or gold, you've got a twenty-five percent, fifty percent, seventy-five percent chance to get either to get a car part for a car. Mm-hmm. It's a Lamborghini. Uh, I need ten parts to have the car. I think from the looks of it. And if you don't get a car part, you get a car, uh, sorry, a car part to construct a Lamborghini, you get a car part for your car okay. to improve it. So you get something. There's also seems to be these other things where you have to try and, this happened with one of the chase invitations I accepted, where I was helping somebody evade the police, the cops, and there's another player in who was the cops as well, helping the cops try and stop this person. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing and it hadn't explained it to me at all. I did not know what I was doing. So I figured out I was just trying to help the guy escape. But I've never done one of these where I was the guy trying to escape and had all these other people in it. I've never done that before. I've only mm-hmm. ever been the guy helping the other guy escape. Yeah. So I don't know where these things are unless they're part of the DLC as well. It's just you're allowed to join in and help. But you're not allowed you know, to be the police. But you can help somebody escape the police. But you can only be the person escaping the police if you've got the DLC. I'm not sure, because I've never seen these, and I was never told how to do it, and nothing was explained when I dropped into it. Mm -hmm. But the crates are quite simple. You just 
be men and help the guy with the crate get to the destination and you get a reward. I only do the gold ones because I just want car parts. <laughs> I don't think, also, I don't think you can repeat a crate. I think the crates are one time. De possibly uh, permanently once. You can only do it once for the whole time you're playing the game or for a certain amount of time and then it resets. But I, I found myself accepting a couple of crate invitations uh, and delivering them but not getting the reward second time round because I just got a car part rather than a, for improving my car rather than a car part for building the Lamborghini and it said you've already corrected this crate so it automatically gave me the, the improvement piece rather than the car part and I just found that so I, I'm not sure what the metric is for that how it, whether or not you can redo them later and get the crate or whether or not it's done once and that's it I don't care if it is done once and that's it as long as I get the car yeah. at the end of it but I'm not sure why it you also get an unbelievable amount of experience points for doing these. I leveled up twice from helping one guy escape. I don't know how helpful I was. <laughs> but it's... Uh, I'm really having a lot of fun with it when it comes to just my evaluation of the game. It needs a bit more explanation, but I think it's just because they just want you straight in. Because as soon as you're off the bat and you've got a car, you can... Once you've got your own car, you could just drive up to Maine turn around and go all the way down to Los Angeles across the entire country. That's cool. Just straight away. It's just trying to get you into it. That's the, the story. It's very small and slight because it's just trying to get you into racing. Uh, the story starts you off in Detroit, moves you to Chicago. And one mission I just did randomly dropped me in Las Vegas to do a race and immediately took me back to Chicago. It really moves you around, but in a sort of controlled way where you feel like you're exploring, but also getting used to racing but it's not shy of saying look the stuff over here go and do it or the stuff over here let's give you a race and then we'll take you back to you know the lands you know um like i did a chase last few days ago which i ended up in uh, the south like new orleans or louisiana or something like that and i did another couple of chases that ended up in las vegas and i've only been in detroit and chicago so right. I've got these random explored areas in different areas <laughs> of the map and then up in the top right, that's where I've been. Um, <clears throat> and then I've unlocked a drift specialist for tuning and a performance specialist for tuning to get new cars and new specs for my cars. And that allows me to, to go and get new uh, layouts for my cars to do different races. But I've got to drive to New York or, or different places to get these specs. Right. Florida might be the other one, I'm not sure. So it's really, it just says to you, go, just go. And I think that's what the whole thing is. I think that's why the story is so slight. But getting rid of it, I don't think serves any purpose. The one thing I have noticed is that when you level up five levels, you go up 25 points uh, for your car. Right. But it apparently applies to all cars. So I'm wondering if that retrospectively applies to any cars that I buy. Because I've only got one car and there's loads you can buy. So does that apply to all the cars I still to buy? Will it apply when I buy them? Or have I just lost that upgrade potential because I didn't buy the cars earlier? I'm hoping it's not the last one. Yeah. Because that would be a bit unfair. But it doesn't look like it would take too long for me to level up a new car anyway. But as I said, I'm really having fun with it. And the whole point of it seems to be just, just go, just drive. And then it annoys me though, because occasionally it'll just say, oh no, you can't go here. Just, I bet the map, it'll just decide no you can't go here and you'll hit an invisible wall for no reason right stupid absolutely stupid i'm not talking about you trying to get into canada because that's just immigration control i understand why i can't do that <laughs> i'm talking about trying to get over a mountain it will just stop you for some reason i'm not i'm not stop as in i can't accelerate up i am hitting a wall the back of my car is bouncing up when i hit it and I, it's an invisible wall and i don't know why that's annoying that's just silly i don't know why but uh, other than that i'm having quite a bit of fun with it that's good. So, I'll probably keep playing that. Don't I don't I might finish the story. I don't know if I, I I don't think I'll do all the skills and landmarks, but I'm having fun just popping in a few hours a week and just getting some stuff done. So, mm. I'll probably finish the story and then see how I feel. But yeah, that's cool. Sounds like a really fun game. I really really want somebody else like Brian who does have a copy. Is this, to, is this on? Sorry, is this on the computer or is this on Xbox? I'm unsure as to what other platforms it's on, but it is. What, what I'm playing, playing it on Xbox, Xbox One. Xbox, right? Okay. And uh, I just Brian has a copy of it, and you know you can drop in and drive with other drivers because there's other people in your world anyway. Oh, cool! But you can have people you know drop in, and you can yeah. just form a convoy. 
I really want Brian to join in and just drive with me, so I might bully him and see if at some point he's. See, he just to admitted that. to being a bully. Oh, of course, I'm a bully. It's just I'm a constructive bully. He bullies bully. me all the time. It's on computer and PlayStation Four. Apparently, there was a 360 port developed because it was released in 2014. But oh. that can't be very good. It has a loading time problem already, let alone cutting the power. Anyway, so yeah, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. Same with oh. Halo Five. So I'm. I've just been doing a lot of ranking up in the games I'm playing. I'm now the highest rank of all my compadres in Halo 5. I've jumped Samuel and James, so I'm now a couple of ranks higher. So, <laughs> You're a little bit happy about that, are you? Well, yeah, yeah. Hills is ranked 54, Samuel's ranked 61, James is ranked 67. Uh, and I used to be just below, I'd say, about 58 or something. And I just decided, you know what, I'm having so much fun playing Castle Wars and playing um, um, Warzone I'm just going to keep playing it I'm just going to have fun with this and mm -hmm. I just ended up massively rank, over ranked in a week I went up like 15 levels so well well done pat, 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 pat. thank you so now we move to the game that we've both been playing but maybe not together <laughs> playing Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes yes. so you started this this week yes and my recommendations I wanted someone to play with I think I yeah, probably pr probably started it, I think, a few days ago. So, I can't really remember how it started, but you it's a mobile game. Yes. So, it kind of just, like you said with the crew, it kind of just like launches you into it. It gives you characters that you could play. And basically, you're, you're creating a team. Does it start you with the um, clone trooper and the Jedi consular? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a Wookiee. That's you get three at the start. Yeah, well, yeah, I okay. did. Yeah, um, yeah, that sounds familiar. And you're basically sort of just going through, I suppose it is now standard mobile sort of kind of game. So you're just going from level to level to level, and it gets gradually harder. And you're, uh, in each level, you have to defeat three rounds of um, dark side villains. No, not necessarily. Well, for the main bit, yeah, you do. No, not later on. Thank you. You asked, you asked me what I've been playing. This is what so I've been playing. So no, it beginning. hasn't been what you've been playing. That's no, so not how it works. <laughs> I've You're an idiot. Well. <laughs> I've played as well. All I'm saying is that um, <clears throat> there was a question I had, actually, was I was going to say, was that it drops you in and you use the squad you've got to fight other squads. Yes. Right, but uh, my point is that um, you need a certain number of... How many players do you start with? Three. You start with three, and they're all light side, so you're doing yeah. light side battles because it splits it into yes. light side and dark side yes. battles. And that differentiation is for the units you're allowed to use. So the light side battles, you can only use light side units. Yes, you can't mix and match. You, yes, but the cantina battles allow yes, you, you can, to do that. Yes, you can, you yeah. can mix and match. That's what they're for. So you use your squad to fight other squads. Yes. And have you done any dark side fighting? Yes. And who have you got in that? Uh, I can't remember. Talia? I don't know. She's a Night Sister healer. Yes. Yeah. I can't remember anybody other than that. There's a guy in a red suit and there's a guy in a white suit. Oh, oh, okay, so you've got a Stormtrooper and you've got an Imperial Guard. So it's the same units, actually. It's it's a... a it's the same, I think it's the same basic sort of... It's yeah, just you've a got a mirror. healer... Uh, a taunter sort of tank and yeah. you've got a DPS yes that's what it starts and with and I also and have an Ewok now you unlocked an Ewok yes I, did. I unlocked an Ewok how did you do that uh, just progressed in the game and just gave you the Ewok I think I might have gotten one of the little card things I can't remember what they're called ah now. yeah you can un you get a certain you get five free bronzium cards yes and you can sometimes get characters or character shards in those yeah so I've um, got Ewok now. And you I've also got Luke Skywalker, farm boy. Yeah, you get him in the story, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I think the Ewok you have might be a uh, story as well. Because I think it gives you five good side characters. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing I had a problem with was trying to get some dark side characters together. Because when you do these fights on normal, you're sort of okay. But on hard, you really need all five Yes, you do. Of yeah. your characters, and then well, you some of the normal, off. some of the normal ones. I'm needing all my characters. I could probably do with another character. Well, which you... I've 
because yeah. I've progressed to such a degree that um, I can now uh, borrow characters. Because I got to level 18, and you mm-hmm. were like, Pestry, like, when you get to level 18, send me your code or whatever it was. It's an ally code. That ally code. Send me, me it, send me it, send me it. Which allows me to invite you to be my ally, which is the first step to inviting you yeah. to join my guild of one. So anyway, I got this invite. I was like, right, is this you? And he was like, yes, it is. So I... I um, got you as an ally and then I realised oh I can use your character in a my leader like a character bar- yeah. yeah and I wasted it on a really stupid level no yeah I did you can borrow her as often as you want well I couldn't find bo- find her yeah again. it's a random asser- assortment but if you hadn't used her she just randomly wouldn't appear in future okay that makes me feel a little bit better but, but I was like I was like wow my character's getting pretty powerful then I used yours I was like Oh my god! <laughs> it's like a mini army all on her own. Yeah, she's my worst character. She's just the best as a leader because she has a power that gives people back a huge amount of health at the start of their turn. Yeah. She also has a power that if you have, say, three people who are, or maybe four, who are, uh, you know, say, four out of five or six, three out of uh, five, you if they're quite low on health, she balances all the health and then gives everybody 10% health back. Right. So basically, if you've got somebody who's really who's lost a lot of health and the rest are fine, she heals up everybody back to full, okay. essentially. So anyway, um, I like... But I'm going to... So I just interrupt. I'm going to change her for Yoda if you're going to use her because Yoda's incredible. Okay. Because what he does is he can steal every, the enemy's team's buffs and then he can give them to everybody in the team. And he also gives them a certain amount of protection, mm-hmm. so that the enemies will have to fight through that to then hurt your actual units. Yeah. And if he gives them things like um, your units, things like uh, defense penetration, which he sometimes gets, mm-hmm. you'll just cut through the opposition line and not there. Okay. Um, well, anyway, as I was going to say, I quite like the mechanics of this game because it's the kind of thing I like where it's. It, you can just pretty much just mess about with it, try out different things, equip people with different things. I don't really know what the things I'm equipping them does. You're, All I know is it's upgrading upgrading their skills when you've got enough of it. Yeah, so it's it's not like um, you're equipping them with a, 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 a certain sword no, and then you take no, that it's... off and equip them with another one that's better. Yeah. You're equipping them with a gear piece. Yes. And there's standard gear pieces that everybody can use, mm-hmm. but they need certain pieces to... For each slot. Yeah. Uh, and then they rank up a gear level, which unlocks new abilities, especially for when you use them as crew in ship battles. But the crews are always very predetermined for those. You can't just randomly use any person. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not enjoying it. It's pretty it's prescriptive, but it means you can't make a mistake, so you're quite... Yeah. When it comes to levelling them up, you can't accidentally give them a bad piece of equipment. If they need it, they need it. That's it. And so it, it, I think you would enjoy that because it allows you to just, you're not going to screw up. No. You're not going to make a mistake giving them a piece of equipment. If they need it, they need it. That's it. Yeah. It just makes it much simpler. So, so I think that goes to what you were saying about it being quite a nice wee game. It is. It's a nice game and it's probably the reason why I've not been progressing in GTA 3. Because I've been playing this more than anything I have else. to say, you know, well done because you got up to level... 18 now. Really quickly. Like a lot quicker than I would have expected. I know because you 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 texted me it was a few days ago and said what level are you on? I said I'm on level four. I said well okay you're going to be probably playing this for another week and a bit to be able to get up to level eighteen where I can yeah. add you as an ally and then literally almost two days later I was like I'm on, I'm on level eighteen now. Yeah, I think the reason for that is that I'm level eighty five, which is the maximum level you can't go any higher. Um, Why eighty five? That's such a weird number to stop on. I'm not sure, but I think it's quite common. Like I know, but eight, it's, it's, it's a the, weird number to stop at, you know what I mean? No, like, I know, it's, but it's there's a, a Marvel Strike Force game, I think, which is, works in the same sort of, you build a squad, give them gear, Yeah. Uh, you can also give them mods, the same as in Star Wars, yeah. you can give them mods to alter the character, you teach them abilities that they've got, which are all preset, you just mm-hmm. use ability training modules to level them up. Yeah. Uh, you also level them up by using it, training droids in Star Wars. It's all the same sort of stuff. You enhance them with character shards to give them a new character level because there's ranks. For, yes. So there's gear rank, character rank, and character level. Right. As well as ability level. 
So you need shards to unlock the character rank. Mm -hmm. So it's up to seven stars. They're all very simple, just takes time to do. But that's quite common. So it's the same sort of thread through all of them. But they're all level 85, if I remember correctly. And I don't know why. It's a weird, as you're right, it's a weird level to pick. But anyway, I'm interested to know what a guild is. I'm actually, I think I'm on level nineteen now. Yeah, it's level. Hold on, let me. I'm just gonna actually. Can yeah, I load it's it on up? your phone. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's level twenty two on lots yeah. guilds, and that's when I'll be able to invite you to my guild. And I'm good enough on my own to get a couple of stars from an attack. I don't know what a guild. I I understand. No, I know what a guild is, but I don't understand. In this, a guild allows you to do certain guild uh, fights. So there's raids you can do, but there's also territory wars. In the territory wars, you get a certain number of... If you take over an area in a territory war, which is, all, from what I've seen, is always... Um, it's always Hoth, and you're either the Empire fighting the rebels or the rebels fighting the Empire. Right. And there's loads of different territories that you can do. Mm -hmm. And when you take one over, there's three ranks for it, and you have to put a certain number of units in to get... Uh, territory points yeah you need a certain number of territory points to take over each level level 19 that's what i'm on right and we, we could have a look at your your crew um but you also you can also do fights in them that get you extra points yeah for taking over these areas and you get a star and when you get stars the stars are translated into currency for you to buy shards from a certain guild shop that you can buy shards from mm -hmm. you won't have unlocked all these different shops i've unlocked them all the shard story is a little disappointing and um, the whole point of the guild is you do those fights and you uh, that's what you'll be able to do yeah. but you'll benefit as well so that's that's the characters I have so far mm -hmm. so you've got Clone Wars, Chewbacca, Jedi Consular yeah this is all the ones that you said you had you've got 11 shards for Darth Vader already you must have done quite a few of the achievements yeah the one thing I don't like about games like this is they hide a lot of the character shards so you can't find them. I don't even know. So I had those until you just um, told me. That's the number here. Okay, let me have a look. Um, so things like Bastila oh, yeah. Shan is a new character they just released and you, you can't do a fight to get her shards. you just got to hope that you Well, I know I've enough. battled Darth Vader a few times. Does well, that... that... No. No. No, it doesn't have anything to do with it. No. But... It's just a really, it's quite complex, the game, but I found it really rewarding and I've played it every day. Yeah, well I've done so far 90 light side battles, 21 dark, 15 katina. Ka uh, no, those are stars, those are not individual battles. Oh, I've got 90 stars then. 90 stars, that's pretty good. That's really good, that's about a quarter of it, isn't it? Uh, no. Well, it says next to it. Third, 381. Yes, yeah, so that's about a quarter, so you've done really well. I'm on about 300 for light odds and... 200 odds for dark and how many cantinas are there? 168. So probably like 70 or something. Yeah. And I've, I've been training up everybody. Yeah. Because uh, when you do a battle and you get three stars in it, you can you can sim it. Yeah. So you're allowed to only... It costs you a certain amount of energy to do a battle and you're only allowed to do light side or dark side battles five times a day. Yes. Cantina ones you can do as long as you've got cantina energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, ship battles are the, they're limited as well but uh, when you do it three stars you can sim it and that makes it much easier so the challenges you can sim eventually you can sim most aspects of the game once you've won it enough it costs uh, a lot to train people yeah it doesn't at your level it costs me like 15,000 gold things to train someone credits really. yeah how high were you training them Quite a lot. I think it was like about seventeen to twenty-two of those things. Yeah, I uh, of the training modules. Yeah, I am. Um, I uh, leveled up um, my Yoda from seventy-five to eighty-four, and it cost me five million, something like that. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, leveling up the abilities to the the rank seven and eight abilities costs like tens of thousands of credits as well as special equipment. But well, obviously, you must you must win quite a lot then. No, the challenges and the events are really important for getting gold. Mm -hmm. You have to really focus on getting the credits, sorry, because they, they're the limiting factor. I haven't run out of training droids. I haven't run out. The ability modules, you get them back so quickly, you're okay. Mm -hmm. 
because you only need up to nine is the highest number I've seen for increasing someone's ability but the money side of it you can easily drain all the money leveling up a few characters I'm level 85 but my, my team is like ranks is like 75 78 and 84 because yeah. I just don't have the money to do them all up to 85 you got to be very careful about the how you use your stuff you can't just chuck it at it from the point of view of completing the game if you could do such a thing you know it's not a disaster if you spend a lot of money leveling someone up you just got to wait to get to make some more but you do want to construct it in a, in a construct you don't do it in a constructed way okay but um but so at the moment i'm just trying to like level everybody up to like roughly the same level should not be doing that i how many i would focus as as quickly as you can on doing the hard difficulty battles so that you can unlock character shards to get better characters okay because see the characters that you have i don't use any of them for anything anymore well again i'm only on was it level 18 yes yeah. but I, I i you'll find that as you unlock better characters you just start dropping well yeah yeah i understand yeah. that yeah so that's what you do mm -hmm. Um, especially, I mean, my team is five Jedi. Uh, so how are you, how how are you finding? It? You tell us a bit more about your experience because I've interjected quite a lot there to talk about the mechanics of the game. But yeah. tell us your actual experience. Well, it's fine. It's very addictive. But you're like, oh, I'm just going to do one more. I'm just going to do one more load of battle. I'm just going to do one more, one more, and then you're like, <laughs> I spent probably about maybe two hours straight yesterday playing it. Really? Did you have enough energy to do that? I don't know. Well, you must have, obviously. Yeah. I'm surprised you did. I was wondering, oh no, you're levelling up a lot, aren't you? And you get... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get extra energy every time you level up. Yeah, so I'm playing it pretty much all, like yeah. any spare moment I was getting yesterday. Yeah, that stops. Yeah. As just levelling up starts to slow down, you're limited in how many battles you can do a day because you don't get that energy. You get the energy boost from the timed ones you know you get every six not, hours not. oh yeah okay, you get yeah. some normal battle energy every once a day it's cantina and twice a day ship i think yeah that yeah other than that it'll slow down what else that's pretty much it i just i'm just enjoying it are you looking forward to anything is there any part of the game you really want to see no i just like trying to level up as quickly as i can all right that's my challenge, it's just leveling, you leveling just, up. You just get to the I don't really care about anything else. Call of Duty Prestige it. That's what I'm like with every, any game though, I don't really care about anything else. I don't, like 100% um, completion, I'm not really all that interested in. Mm -hmm. I've only ever done that with one game and that is Life is Strange. Mm. So I wanted to get every little thing. I was just, oh, that's a lie, Spyro. I, I've done it with a lot of games like on the Xbox 360. I really wish the Xbox One did this. It kept a track specifically of games you've got all the achievements on. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with like 17. Oh. Which is pretty difficult to do one, to be honest, because there's always one achievement that's just yeah. a nuisance. But if I liked the game and the achievements weren't ridiculous, they were mm -hmm. challenging without being ludicrous, then I would have fun doing yeah. that. Final recommendations for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah, if you have a device that can support it, play it. Just 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 play it. Play. 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 That's the orders received. Go out, minions. Go forth and play. Now, we've, that's all the games we've been playing. Numerous and varied as they were. Now we move on to the news. Yes. And we have to welcome our special... Guest for the news, <laughs> our special correspondent, our Red Dead Redemption 2 correspondent, Brian Anderson. Hello! Indeed. Nice to have you back. Thank you. So, we will get to Red Dead Redemption 2, mm -hmm. but we have a couple of other pieces of news first from Abigail. In quotations, news. Yeah. <laughs> Light fluff pieces. Yes, well... Away. I want them to know what they're getting. I'm not getting any any hard hitting news facts here for you. Video game journalism. They weren't exactly going to be <laughs> rocking in their seats. This isn't anything yeah. about North Korea, so. Okay, anyway. one quick thing. I do know that I've mentioned before that I love life. And life is strange. I know that the. Sorry, you what? Life is you strange. Really? What? Yeah. Sorry. Are you telling me you said this before? 
Are we talking about said at least twice on every episode or? I know that the trailer for the sequel has dropped. I am not watching it yet because I'm still determined to try and play this Captain Spirit at some point. <laughs> How's that going? It's not. My it's computer not. will still not let me play it. <laughs> because I don't have the requirements apparently. I finally found that out. Right. I don't, my laptop does not support, does not have the requirements for it. Is that it. the problem that people have been having? I, th I, th I think that's probably what and it is. what is the requirement that you lack? The, the was it RAM? V VRAM. VRAM. Right. Hmm. Okay. I don't have it. And also I've got, what was it, um, Intel, was it Intel i3? Mm -hmm. And apparently you need about i5 and above. Well, mm, mm, uh, well uh, no, it's uh, unlikely yeah. to be the fact it's an i3. It's more likely to be, what number follows the i3 you've got? Mm, I can't remember. Is it a 7? I can't remember. Oh, right, okay. She said I hate line. when people ask me that. Was it this? I don't know. Was it this? Well, they try to jog your know. memory. Yeah, try to jog your they memory. They try to jog your memory. Well, yeah, what's that? But uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, because it's it's a generational thing. So if the number's a six or a seven, that's the generation. It's more likely to be that than the I. Number. Okay. Well, anyway, it's not going. Okay. So so you need a a new computer, right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm gonna get. I don't know which one yet, but I'm gonna get one. Okay. Okay. So there's that. Um. I found this out. There's this, basically, the, I think it's in uh, So Thailand. hold on, just go back to that, because you weren't finished there. Oh, wasn't I? No, no, I decided you weren't. Um, <laughs> why is it that it took you so long to work that out? Because I was just trying to find out why it was it wasn't working, and it just took me that long to research it. In mm. between doing other things. In between doing no, other no, no, things no, no. in I'm, real life. I'm wondering why... Is this a problem... I think it's very difficult to work out whether or not you meet those requirements. Like they don't tell you that yeah. VRAM is a requirement. Uh, well, it just keeps pop it popped up with um, saying you don't have it, and then I thought I did, and it just took me a long time to figure out how I was to find out if I did or didn't have it. I'm not a computer expert. I don't no, know. No, no, but computers. I'm wondering whether or not they they told you there was that on the system requirements that they gave I'm, you I'm not gonna, say it. I don't know I'm not gonna I'm gonna be truthful I played Life is Strange I auto automatically thought I was gonna be able to play this game right but you also said there was a lot at the time you said like about half of laptop users were for some reason they couldn't work out unable to play it so. I think it's probably the same thing and it's not been properly telling people what the requirement is for the VRAM I don't know maybe it has been I didn't look up the requirements right. before I installed I'll the game I'll check that I'll check that I'll have a look and see how easy it is to, to actually work that out it probably is very easy I just didn't check it out okay which was disappointing right so um you're now finished with that particular piece. Yes, I've now finished that particular piece. May I move on? Am I allowed to move on now? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Hurry up before I change my mind. Right, so latest trailer for Super Smash Bros. Uh, Ultimate. Ultimate. Thank you. I couldn't think of how to... Uh, even though I've got that word written in front of me, I couldn't think of how to actually pronounce it. Has re been released apparently. Ultimate. Multipass? Multipass? <laughs> you seen the fifth element? No. Oh, right. You won't get that then. Multipass? No. <laughs> That's obscure, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> fifth Element's good, though. It's good. My so recommendation, obscure. watch the Fifth Element. So, is Luigi dead? That is the real question. The latest trailer released, and it showed Luigi getting its soul ripped out. His soul ripped out. Yeah, his, not it. it. Jeez. Calm down. The soul's not out yet. Um... Wow. <laughs> well, no, you don't have to be dead if your soul's missing. <laughs> well, I don't know. Everybody's, just, everybody's been asking, is Luigi dead? Apparently Nintendo have said, no, he's fine. But mm. now, it's, is it a marketing ploy to get just people to buy this to find out, is, have they actually killed off one of their main characters? I doubt it. Luigi's... I mean, people don't necessarily like Luigi, even though he's not as bad well, as... Well, actually, a, a lot of love has been shown for Luigi. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Many people yeah. are unhappy with this. They, they, he's popular enough for that to be... Ooh a potentially mm. disastrous move so they've probably just put in some intrigue <laughs> uh, I doubt very it's much not I don't know off. but I just thought it'd be interesting to say that yeah it's I, one thing everybody's been talking about so I thought we should say something yeah about forgive it. my lack of knowledge of uh, the Mario universe characters names from top Luigi's of my head the but no I know Luigi one who looks like you <laughs> yeah but the issue is if you're going to kill anybody off 
especially for like to improve the story there's plenty of other characters you can kill off <laughs> that aren't Luigi yeah because Luigi has some half decent games of his own well not just that but he's just quite good he, uh, he's there's also right. Sniper Luigi yeah. from uh, Mario Kingdom and Rabbits or however you pronounce that uh, Sniper Luigi is just like insane he's, he's, a, he's a mass murderer <laughs> Sniper Luigi you put him on Overwatch and he just goes mental. Are you? Okay, so that was that. I, I don't think that they would get rid of Luigi. I think this is something to do with the yeah. game. It's a great marketing so plot. Maybe there's a I story a in there or a plot. campaign or something, but it's not. I don't think they've got rid of him. Well, maybe good. the looks, story is Mario getting Luigi's soul back to save well, his life. Well, it's a story, but there might be a, some sort of like. No, but you know, I watched it. I watched it and it genuinely looks amazing how. Just from a cinematic point of view, the actual trailer looks really good. Mm. I mean, did it have any of those uh, dynamic worlds in them? You know, the, for the background. I <coughs> uh, can't remember. I'm not going to lie. I just kind of watched that one point where he gets his soul ripped out. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. Okay, right. So she's... Um, I've only watched that part. <laughs> that's an excellent attention span you've got there. Thank you. He's a bit mental. <laughs> I am the goldfish. I just watched the bit where they tore his soul out and thought, hmm, nice. No, it just it just looked really cool. As in cinematically? Cinematically, right, it okay. looked amazing. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. That's why you brought me on to do this. Is oh, yeah, yeah, to do the cinematic. editing and also the cinematic thing about it. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> I asked you, what could I bring to this? And you were like, well, you did media. Thanks. So I thought this was, I thought this was sweet and also just kind of fun. Um, there's a, a gentle, an elderly gentleman called, I really do apologise for the pronunciation of your name, uh, Shen San Yuan, who has taken Pokemon Go to the extremes. Is it, what country, sorry? I think it's Thailand he's from. Can I see the name? Is it written down? Yes, I've written it down. Um... Uh, Chen San Wan. Okay. Or Yuan. Is that Wan or Yuan? It's Chen San. Anyway, Wan. this gentleman. Chen San Yuan. Chen San Yuan. This gentleman Yuan. has taken Pokemon Go to new to new extremes. Um, he has attached eleven smartphones to his bicycle. And placed uh for about twenty hours straight catching Pokemon and he spends on average about a thousand pounds a month on Pokemon, on, this, Go. on Pokemon Go. How old is the elderly gentleman? Um, I don't know. It didn't say how old he was. What age is... So wait, is he on a bike though? So he's getting out bicycle. about, cycling about yeah. doing this. Yeah, but well, who cares? what age is him? senility <laughs> set in? Because this guy's gone mental. I don't know. 11 smartphones strapped to his bike so he can spend a thousand pounds catching Pikachu. And he also has power backups with him so that if his phones run out he can oh, whatever he gets you the house he's, oh, he's, he's loving he's actually um, said that it has increased his social life quite a bit oh, yeah he's made new friends and he believes it's also um, what's the word uh, haltered the advances of Alzheimer's I don't it didn't make it it, didn't, it wasn't <laughs> no, clear no. It, didn't, it wasn't clear shush it wasn't clear whether or not he actually does have Alzheimer's. <laughs> I can tell you right now, that is not halting Alzheimer's. It's a symptom of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so mean. This, I think it's really lovely. His grandson introduced yeah. him to this game, mm -hmm. and he's really loved it. And it's he's, really nice. He's become a local celebrity for doing it. It's really nice to see a grandparent actually learn from their grandchild something about yeah that sort of because uh... my question wouldn't be like his mental health my question is like how does he get a thousand pounds a month I don't know to it, spend it, on it him? didn't it didn't um, the article I read didn't it, I got this article from the BBC News website it didn't go into a lot of specifics because it was kind of I'm kind of like hoping he's some rich old guy. Who doesn't know what to do with himself and instead of sitting depressed in the house by himself it's just decided he's right it's, it's nice Pokemon Go it gets me out of the house and we're it's, it. it's nice to have a positive story for Pokemon Go because I know for a very long time Pokemon Go was having a very negative stories and little kids going out by themselves and going down dark alleys and things like that people are worried about it people, no this was a genuine thing people were saying that kids shouldn't play it because of this reason what are you doing here kid 
Yeah. Try to find Pikachu. Oh, uh, <laughs> you'll find it. Try to catch a squirtle. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying to find the magic dragon, but no, <laughs> it's not helping me. I'll try to catch a dragon, right? <laughs> Just imagine it banging on the door. <laughs> Could you imagine, honestly, if you took drugs and you saw Pokemon floating in front of you and you tried to catch them, and then somebody releases Pokemon Go and you can never tell quite whether or not you're out your head at any given moment. Well, you will know, because if it's on the screen, that's one thing, but if it's not on the screen, that's something completely different. No, no, but the point is, everybody around you is now trying to catch the magic Pokemon that you can't see. This is going to be weird. But anyway, so I just thought that was uh, really... Nice little story. Hmm. I, I do think that funny though, that story. I'm sorry. I just it, it's it's funny, <laughs> no, but it's the, also sweet. No, 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 no. That that story, yeah, it's great, but I meant the kids like going right. down town no, alleys no, and people that. Were genuinely I'm just playing terrified. Pokemon Go. People were genuinely <laughs> Come here, yeah, okay. They were scared <laughs> of, They were scared in case kids were gonna Genuinely, <laughs> it's like a car park. There's like ten boy racers and all that. Like hundred guys standing about going, "What are you up to tonight? Oh, no much, man. You got the gear. I've got the gear." It's like, "Excuse me, I'm just trying to find Pikachu." <laughs> hey! <laughs> Employing six-year-olds as undercover cops, <laughs> so they wander the drug dens there. I'm just playing Pokemon Go. What's he doing? Ah, it's fine. Just leave him, Billy. He's just playing Pokemon Go, leaves the wee lad to go. Wanders in the back room. Go, 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 I found it! <laughs> He's just got a, instead of a Pikachu floating on the screen, it's just a giant cop shield and he hits it when he <laughs> finds the bad stuff. <laughs> they kick the door in. <laughs> what are you doing, my sexual son? It's for national security. We have to take your charge from you. He's an expert in Pokemon. We're recognizing your child. Yeah. <laughs> Requisitioning your child and all of his Pokemon. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Why don't you go? I've got seven hours. <laughs> so, yeah, that was about it. <laughs> now that we've had our laugh with a kid's game. <laughs> <laughs> kids getting recruited by the police it's to like, go undercover. It's like butters when the terrorists get... <laughs> when they go to imagination land. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and the terrorists have him. He's like, oh, they just capture him, but they're like, kick him the You see him going, ah, ah, ah. oh no, it would be more. It like, really um, should be funny, but it's absolutely it'd hilarious. Be more like uh, the. the uh, <laughs> I just remember that episode. It'd yeah. be more like uh, you know all the people in that <laughs> episode where they're all. I'm not sure. I'm a lemma, 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 lemma. They all. I'm not sure. I'm a lemma, They they continue with the pretense that they're all actually from the old west. What's this cell phone you're talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 all the actors. And, yeah. and he, he, the kid comes in and says, I'm just playing Pokemon Go. What the Pokemon Go? Oh, and yeah. all these old gangsters are like, What's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it totally wouldn't work. So I'm just playing Pokemon Go. Let me have a look at that. No, 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 don't look. <laughs> He's on like a video call with the chief of police who for some reason isn't in normal civilian gear but is sitting there with his police hat on. Like his proper big bobby hat, the one yeah. that goes up and down, and <laughs> flags in the background and awards on the wall. I've not watched South Park for a very long time. Have they actually incorporated the Pokemon Go story into the canon? I've not into watched the it. Canon? I've not watched them. No, there will be ones. I, I was watching his memory berry stuff with all. It just didn't work. You could tell they were counting on uh, Hillary Clinton winning. Right. Member. I like the member berry stuff, which right. included the uh, that, national anthem remake. But the old ones come on like series nine to twelve. And it's like every episode is really funny. And it's like it happens to have a point. Yeah. But it's really funny in the process. It's not all about a point and tries to be funny making that point. Like the Pope being a rabbit, that's hilarious. Mm. That was so funny. I think the most current episode I watched was the one of PewDiePie in it. Where they actually like put his li- yeah. li- live feed in it. Well, not live feed, but... That's live. because Trey Parker, who's like the main guy yeah. making South Park. Troy Baker, remember him? <laughs> His I got conf- sorry. We were talking about a game last week, and was it um, the crew? James brought up. I brought up Troy Baker, and I thought that was Trey Parker. Yeah, and he told you that it was Trey Parker. You said Troy Baker is the maker of South Park. <laughs> <laughs> Guy no, who voiced yeah. the Joker. Is I was off by what was it? He voiced, Two letters. He voiced everybody. <laughs> I my my fondest memory of him, if I'm being honest, is uh, Yusuke from Persona Four Gold. That's great. 
<laughs> said that last week as well. Yeah, I know. That's why he's, it's my fondest memory. It's not his fondest course. memory of him. It's his fondest memory. It's my fondest spot. memory is Yuzuki rolling around inside a bin. Help me get out! His wee legs and kicking around. <laughs> and help! Another help! night. Help! The other night when I was trying to find something to watch in mm-hmm. the flat, uh, we watched The Man from Uncle mm-hmm. uh, with Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a and I looked him up and he has a new film coming out with Nathan Fillion in it. Hold the presses on you go. I don't know much about the film. Just saying that it's a new film with Nathan Fillion in it. I've not seen Man from Uncle. It was alright. I mean, but the The relevant part there was the Nathan Fillion bit. It was alright. The film was alright. But I was reading up about Henry Cavill. He is like quite the uh, video game player. Yes, yes, he... He's played, uh, he was playing, uh, what do you call it? He was playing World of Warcraft right. when he got offered the Superman role. <laughs> and he said he almost missed out on it because he didn't want to uh, like stop playing the game to answer the phone because you can't pause it. And he's also played The Witcher 3 twice. Yes, mm-hmm. that's and says, it. And says he would be really buzzing to play Geralt. And he's played Skyrim and, uh, as well. And uh, the Netflix series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This guy, I love this guy. Fine. He's, like, he's built like a tank as well. Fine. Yeah. He seems to have escaped the Superman curse as well. Which he's, is in, he's in Mission oh, Impossible. He didn't escape the Superman well, curse because they were supposed to make five Superman movies with him in them and they ruined the first one so much they cancelled mm. the rest. Uh, oh, well. It's not his fault because he's in Mission Impossible and he's good. No, he's good. They just DC honestly seemed to be run by... the like. Yeah. See that guy we were talking about <clears throat> who's on drugs and can't remember if he's playing Pokemon Go or anybody else is? They're the people running DC. Can I just say, I recently watched um, Justice League, right? And I was... A, I Don't used, tell us what happened. I'm not, I'm not, right? not going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you... Can I tell you about the, a character in particular? Yeah, okay. There's the Flash. Uh-huh. Everybody knows that, that he's in the film. Aye. I, I, for a very long time, was watching the television series. Aye. The television series Flash was, I thought, so much better than the movie. I'm not sure if you're allowed to criticise the Flash actor. Who? I'm not criticizing the Flash actor. I'm ca- talking about the character. Oh, the character. The yeah. character. No, I like the what actor. You mean not allowed to criticize the actor? Who's the actor? The actor? I oh. cannot. I, can, I can't for life remember what the kids, what the guy's name is. But he played um, the, the. He he was in Fantastic Beasts. He played like the one that Colin Farrell sort of. But anyway, no, that means nothing. So yeah, let's just oh, well. skip to the next piece of news. Because we're now talking about Harry Potter, and I cannot be bothered. Um, there's a couple of Harry Potter shows on actually at the DC's, fringe, like. DC TV shows are very good it's just the movies which seem to decide that they're going to be terrible yeah but the best thing is Batman and if you can't get that right oh, go home just go home anyway Batman's the best thing Tim Burton Batman was awesome yes uh, as was the animated series Kevin Conroy's the best Batman hands down <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> small piece of news from me. Uh, next week, we're gonna, me and Abigail are going to watch a couple of uh, gameplay footages that have been released of a game called Phoenix Point. Uh, they developed XCOM. Um, we're going to have a look at these and report back with what we uh, think. Okay. XCOM was a tile-based <laughs> strategy game. And uh, it's, it's very highly rated, so it would be very, very good to see if this Phoenix Point is of any good at all. Okay. I meant to say, listening to you on 1.5 times playback speed is like a <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg in the social network. Uh, you ever seen that? Yes, I have. You ever is it? <laughs> Everybody else just... I don't like that. I hated that movie. I liked it. I, I, liked it. I, I liked it. I, I, you'll have to put that to 0.5 if I ever get a good night's sleep. 0.5? Right. Yeah. You have to put that to point five because if I get a good night's sleep, I tried to listen to it in times two, and it just went, <laughs> which is exactly what I would sound like if I had a good night's sleep. You have to put it down. Did we play Brian when, when um, we actually? No, we didn't. Oh. We did uh, fa- uh, Fafa Bowers when, um, one. When I we was sped it up for when I was reason. editing the first podcast. Yeah. I hadn't edited for quite a while in the software and I was pressing a button where I thought I was actually trimming down the audio but what I was actually doing, I was just uh, making it go faster and I didn't so realise this until halfway through. That can work. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious listening. So it suddenly became oh. a case of, oh, have you played Halo? <laughs> That's how a lot of people listen to podcasts. 
Nobody one, is one and a half times. Nobody is listening to a podcast where the person goes <laughs> one and a half times. No, but this was four hundred percent or. No, yeah, it, it, took, it took what was, it was about 4, a, a twenty-second clip and put it into what was it literally three seconds? Yeah, it massively sped up. So it honestly just became. <laughs> there was one point where I was laughing in it, and it just went. <laughs> you made some weird noise in it. It was as incredible. Well. <laughs> you made some weird noise. Like, yeah. uh, that was the noise. Yeah. You know what I I don't know what I did to suddenly go, eh, but it was ridiculous. I finally remembered where, what that made me. Uh, Imagine if somebody sped this up. Imagine if somebody speeds up me going, that's I'll do going that. to sound ridiculous. I'll try it. I'll try it later on when I'm editing and see what happens. Should I, It'll should, blow up. Should I <laughs> do that? Start we can keep that in. I could talk, I'll talk like that for about 10 Please seconds. Please don't. And Please then you don't. speed it up no. and we'll keep it in. I'm keeping all of this in. Exactly. Okay, so. Oh, right, we'll speak that up and see Thank how ridiculous you for doing it that. sounds. We're in Thank a confined you. space and you've done that for about two minutes in total. It's really <laughs> annoying. It's my confined space while we're recording. What? It's my ears it's that have got the headphones on. I'm hearing everything twice as loud. Ooh. And then you've got to edit it. I, I'm working all day Tuesday as well, so I've only got to edit tomorrow. Yeah. Enjoy. Yes. Mm. So, um, any other news, Brian, that you bring with us, or are you just our special Red Dead correspondent? Just Red Dead that piqued my interest. I can talk about the fringe if you like. <laughs> no, no. The fringe is happening just now. Yep. If you don't know, then you just don't know anything. You, if you don't know, then you've never yeah. lived. Yeah, exactly. What is the point? I you forgot it was happening. I thought it, I, every year I keep thinking it's happening at the end of July, and then I forget. Oh no! This well, is it's the start of August. So. I know, but I think th- I keep thinking it's like the last week of July it starts. It can do. No, I think the problem that we've got is that if anybody ever hears this, it's American. They'll not understand what we mean. It's the it's Ed- full of Americans. Edinburgh, it's- not Edinburgh, not Edinburgh. Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yeah, so you would you would say it as the Edinburgh Bangs Festival. What? Tumbleweed. <laughs> the Americans call the Fringe the Bangs. I know. So oh how we get God. that? Don't we? Well, it wasn't supposed to be worthy of the Fringe. Uh, on that note. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Shut up. Thank I'm the one who decides back. when we end. I control this. You think you control it. You think you do. I am the chair. I am the chair. You will respect my authority. Right. So. That's what he thinks. With this absolutely terrible joke and all the news done, that's the, the end of today's shadow cast. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you very much. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe below. Thank Hello, you. future Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> future Brian, refuse to join in any other podcasts. Thank you for being half of the views. Look, right, we've got you, we've got mum, that's it. Future Abigail, you can edit this, I believe in you. <laughs> I believe. Um... What I should do is when I start, I should remind my future self to listen to it two times, playback speed. <laughs> so I can listen to the whole thing. Yeah, because you didn't let me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, thank you for listening. Like and subscribe below. Uh, please catch our other videos. I still constantly ever-growing library of videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook at uh, overshadow.shadowcast and you can email us at overshadow.shadowcast at gmail.com you can also leave a comment underneath the video. Any, Much appreciated if you did. Any comments are welcome. And also... Brian, if you would leave one, saying how great <laughs> you are. And also, if anyone's looking for work, CVs are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> work. We are constantly looking for... Uh, if anybody's looking for unpaid, unpaid interns. internships. Yeah. Unpaid internships, uh, volunteer work, that sort oh, of no, thing. Oh, no, yeah. We're looking for the intern. So we're... If anyone's looking for an internship... That's what I said. No, that's what you say. I said if anybody's looking for unpaid interns, like, I'm, hire me! We've got plenty in the hut. <laughs> yeah. We don't use all of them. We can dig some of them back up. Um, uh, and all that leaves for me to say, other than I haven't killed anyone, is thank you to Brian. Yes, thank you very much for coming back. 
for You're welcome. attending the news section, our most special correspondent, aren't you such a big boy? And to uh, Abigail, Moritz, yes. tech wizard. And thank you, Tommy. Speaking of big boys, Thanks. thank you, Tommy. Yes, I am you. the one and only. Oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed your day. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can go back to bed for the week no. now. Now, I can go back to my, uh, I can go back to my nice and comfy cell. The one with the padded walls. I go back to my 9 to 5 Monday to Friday job. Yeah, seems like you're the one in prison. I know, it's terrible. Like, I go to work and then on like the 25th of each month, they like put funds into my <laughs> bank account. And I'm like, what do I do with this money? Hold on, wait a minute, what? They do Rent what? And food. They put funds into my bank account. Do they know that just deliberate or have you just like cottoned on to some Ponzi scheme? What? This, this funds going into your account. Something yeah. known as a salary, Tommy. It's called a salary. Does this happen to you as well? Yeah, it does actually, because I've also got a real job. <sighs> hey, hey, don't call my life non-real. I didn't say your life. <laughs> this is my life. This is my life. <sighs> and on that note, <laughs> we'll end it. <laughs> you know what it's like, if you get extra cheeky, I have to bring it up. <laughs> uh, Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.